If you have a website, then you need to optimize it so that the user experience is enjoyable and fast. In 2020, Google introduced a metric standard called Core Web Vitals, described as a common set of signals that is critical to all web experiences. These metrics were designed based on core user experience needs. These are loading experience, which is represented by largest contentful paint, visual stability, which is represented by cumulative layout shift, and interactivity, which is represented by interaction to next paint. These are the three core Web Vital metrics and are considered the benchmarks for web performance. Getting good scores across all of these metrics will result in a better user experience for your website's visitors, but also more search traffic as Google rewards websites with good core Web Vitals. Let's take a closer look at the metrics and their scores. Largest Contentful Paint measures how long it takes for a website to display its biggest single content element. Commonly, this is an image, but it could also be text content. For LCP to be measured as good, the LCP element has to be loaded in under 2.5 seconds. 2.5 to 4 seconds is rated as needs improvement, and anything over 4 seconds is rated as poor. The biggest factors that could impact an LCP score are slow server response times, render blocking resources preventing the image from loading sooner, big image sizes or non-responsive image formats, and lazy loading LCP images. Cumulative layout shift is the sum of individual layout shifts in a certain time window of five seconds. Have you ever visited a website and an element has appeared later, pushing content out of its original place? This is a layout shift and high performing websites avoid this. Cumulative layout shift is measured by a calculation of impact fraction and distance fraction. Impact fraction measures how much of the screen area is impacted and distance fraction measures how far an element has moved. Understanding the calculation is not hugely important when it comes to optimizing. The key part to remember is that the total should be under 0.1 to be considered good. 0.1 to 0.25 needs improvement and anything above this will be considered poor. The biggest factors that could impact the CLS score are JavaScript and images loading later than the rest of the content on the page, and web fonts changing the size of rendered text. Interaction to next paint measures how much time elapses between a user interaction like a click or key press and the next time the user sees a visual update on the page. This happens when a frame is rendered. An IMP below or at 200 milliseconds means that the page has good responsiveness. An IMP above 200 milliseconds and below or at 500 milliseconds means that the page's responsiveness needs improvement. And anything above 500 milliseconds means that the page has poor responsiveness. The biggest factors that could impact an IMP score are slow devices, slow event handlers, and third-party scripts. A slower website is going to have fewer potential customers, and optimizing the core web vitals could have a direct impact on conversions. Let's take a look at some real case scenarios. Pinterest was able to increase the performance of their mobile signup page by 60% and consequently increase the conversion rate of the page by 40%. Pinterest created a custom metric focusing on what's important to their users, in their case, that meant measuring how long it takes for images to show up on the screen. Swappy began by determining what metric to use to measure user experience. They chose a metric that would directly benefit from improved performance, relative mobile conversion rate. This is a measure of how well mobile users move through their conversion process relative to desktop users. The mobile conversion rate is usually lower and the relative mobile conversion rate is often around 50%. After only three months of work, Swappy saw relative mobile conversion rate go from 24% to 34%. This resulted in a 42% increase in mobile revenue. During this process, they were able to reduce largest contentful paint by 55% and cumulative layout shift by 91%. Vodafone split tested the impact of their performance improvements to see exactly how their improved user experience translated to sales. By comparing their sales and conversion numbers from before and after the improvements, Vodafone was able to determine that optimizing largest contentful paint by 31% increased sales by 8%. Now that we have a brief understanding of all three core web vital metrics and their importance to performance, site speed, and even conversions, how do we measure them? To understand our website's performance, we need to look at data. Primarily, there are two types of data to help us learn what our core web vital scores are. Field data and lab data. Field data comes from real visitors to your website. If your website gets enough visits, you'll be able to receive Crux data. Crux stands for Chrome User Experience. Crux data is essential to improve website performance, as it gives us a true insight into what our visitors are experiencing and is the official data set for the Web Vitals program. The ultimate goal is to improve our Crux data. Field data encompasses many different user experiences, so we need a statistical way to aggregate the data in one number. 
Let's take LCP as an example. We know that under 2.5 seconds is a good score. If 75% of users experience the largest contentful paint metric of 1.92 seconds, then that means these users will wait less than this time for the LCP to appear and the other 25% will wait longer. 75% is the first percentile we should look at, but that doesn't mean we should disregard the other 25%. You could also look at the 90th percentile of visitors as well. As we can see in this example here, 10% of visitors are having a poor experience as the LCP takes longer than four seconds to appear. So optimizations could potentially be made for that specific set of visitors. When looking at the higher percentiles, such as the 99th percentile, for example, this could include factors outside of your control, such as a very slow connection or reporting errors. Whilst Crux Data gives us a great overview of our website and helps us learn more about which metrics we should be optimizing, waiting for results from our visitors is not ideal, as Crux Data is delayed by 28 days. This is where lab data becomes useful. When you make a change to your website, you can run a lab test to see how the changes have impacted your website's metrics, whether negatively or positively. Lab tests are run in a controlled synthetic environment, which gives us instant feedback on our optimizations. You can control variables such as device type, CPU speed, and location. A great place to start with getting metrics for your website is PageSpeed Insights. Input your website and wait for the results. A lab test will run with the Crux data also being available. Now let's take a closer look at optimization examples for each of the core web vitals, starting with largest contentful paint. LCP is one of the easier metrics to optimize. To understand better how to optimize this metric, it is useful to understand the subparts. Time to first byte measures how long to start loading the HTML document from the website server. Then there's resource load delay, which is the time for the browser to discover the LCP image. Next, there's resource load time, which measures the time for the browser to download the LCP image. And finally, LCP render delay, which is the time for the browser to display the LCP element. If the LCP element is not an image, then the resource load delay and resource load time will be zero milliseconds. If we take a look at this example, we can see from the lab test that the LCP has a score of 3.23 seconds, putting it over the threshold of 2.5 seconds and into the needs improvement category. A great feature of running a lab test in Debug Bear is that you get automated recommendations at the bottom of the page. Here we can see that one of the recommendations is to ensure that the LCP image is loaded with high priority. Looking at the waterfall, we can see that the request for the image happens much later than it could do. The fetch priority attribute should change this. Waterfall charts show what network requests are made when loading a web page and will help us analyze site speed. If we click the experiments tab, we can try out this change and quickly make the optimization thanks to the suggestion. We also have the option to edit the HTML manually as well should we want to make any other changes as part of this experiment. Once the experiment is complete, we can see that the fetch priority worked with LCP now at 1.78 seconds, well within the 2.5 second good threshold. If we take a look at the new waterfall, we can see the request was made much sooner as the browser recognizes the LCP image as a priority. Cumulative layout shift can be a tricky metric to optimize. Sometimes it can be caused by a design choice such as JavaScript content loading later or a third party script. If a page shifts, whether due to an interaction or elements loading later, then Google considers this as a poor experience. On this example page, we can see that we have an image which loads much later than the rest of the content. This is causing the text to shift downwards once the image appears in the browser. When going to the experiments tab and looking at the HTML, we can see that this is a JavaScript generated image, which is using a set timeout function to delay by half a second. If we remove this script and place the image directly into the HTML and run an experiment, we can see that the layout shift has now gone as the image loads with the rest of the content and we now have a good CLS score. Style sheets and fonts can cause layout shifts as well. If you're using a web font, consider using a fullback font whose size matches the web font that you're using to avoid a layout shift. Interaction to next paint is the newest core web vital and is harder to optimize than the other two core web vital metrics. With our previous two examples, a lab test was sufficient for us to make optimizations. If you take a look at the lab results for a web page, you'll notice that IMP is missing from the Web Vitals results. This is because IMP requires an interaction. Instead, you can see the Crux data, but this doesn't give too much insight on which elements should be improved and the data is on a 28 day rolling average mean that any optimizations that you'd make today wouldn't show up in this data till a month afterwards. 
Testing IMP with a synthetic test is possible and Google do have a guide on how to do this. However, it requires some work and if you're not familiar with the DevTools performance profiler, it could be tricky to get the desired results. Google have recognized that optimizing IMP can be quite the arduous task, mentioning this in their article. Improving your site's IMP is an iterative process. When you fix a slow interaction in the field, the chances are good that, especially if your website provides lots of interactivity, you'll start to find other slow interactions and you'll need to optimize them too. With that in mind, using a real user monitoring tool will be your best immediate option as you can quickly find which elements are being interacted with the most. RUM is filled data and simple to set up. Add the snippet to your website's head and data will start to be collected from visitors that you can view instantly. This gives us a great advantage as we don't have to wait for crux data and we can take a closer look at individual experiences. If a user interacts with the page, then you'll be able to see a breakdown of the interaction. There are three IMP components. Input delay, which is waiting for background tasks on the page that prevent the event handler from running. Processing time, which is running event handlers in JavaScript and finally, presentation delay, which is handling other queued up interactions, recalculating the page layout, and painting the page content. If a user has interacted with the page, you will see the breakdown of these components in the individual experience on the right side and the element that was interacted with. When optimizing IMP, you will see the best results from finding your most viewed pages and seeing if they have scores that could be improved. Clicking the IMP tab in the sidebar will pull up an overview of these scores and a table of the most viewed pages on your website. Overall, the IMP scores are good, but our second most viewed page, 12% of users are experiencing poor IMP. Clicking the filter will allow us to look at this page specifically. With the page filter now applied, we can head to the elements tab to see which interactions are taking place. In this instance, it's the input text area selector where 15% of IMP scores are poor. The most common IMP load stage graph in the breakdown tab provides us with more useful data. Here we can see that interactions occurring five seconds after the load is complete could be improved. This tells us that there are likely no background tasks causing an input delay. Going back to the overview, we can see that the largest components are processing time and presentation delay. Because this is a JSON analyzer tool, the poor IMP scores are coming from users submitting large JSON data, which can take a bit longer to process especially if the user's device has a slower CPU. If you find input delay being your main problem, then reducing CPU activity on the main thread should help. Optimizing Core Web Vitals requires a lot of work and knowledge, but understanding the fundamentals of each metric, different types of data, and the tools mentioned in this video to make optimizations easier should get you started on the right path. Debug Bear makes optimizing Core Web Vitals less of a challenge thanks to features used in this video such as automated recommendations, suggested experiments, and real user monitoring. Sign up for the Debug Bear 14-day free trial and start optimizing your website today.